Video tutorial number five, preparing the canvas, part two, the underpainting. I always do an underpainting. I like to put down different colors randomly and quickly. And like we talked about before, fat over lean, so it's gonna be a very washy, thin uh, first layer. Um, but the beauty of doing something like this is that the different colors that you put down, while they are put down um, on the spot, they, your, your informed knowledge of color is, has guided you. So what you put down then is inspiration for your painting. We are going to do a washi um, first layer, so we need to have turp. And turp is the lingo for a turpentine substitute. I happen to like Gamsol, which is Gamblin's product. Uh, for turpentine. When you have used turp before, there is sediment from the paint that sits at the bottom and the turp rises to the top, much like how oil and vinegar don't mix. And so you can always clean out your turp to start by pouring off the clean part and the dirty part at the bottom. You can just take a paper towel and clean it out. Sediment and color that's there as much as you can on your paper towel, pour your relatively clean turf back in and start. Usually when I start a painting, I have just finished another painting. And so what I do is I clean up an old palette. But now for this purpose, I'm just starting with a brand new palette. So I use my palette knife to create colors and I'm just going to take a brush that I keep my brushes dipped in water and I take it and I squeeze out as much water as I can, dip it into the turp so it's nice and turped down, and I'm going to get some color. I personally like to just put down color, and I like to think if I'm gonna put color in one spot, I'm gonna put a variation of the same color in another spot, and just keep going around, let's say. Let's just go around. So that's in the orange family. Here I could put a red family, make a big spot. Um, we can put in, um, let's put in what's a little bit of yellow mixed with a little bit of green. What looks nice next to red? Green looks great next to red. Green is also cool next to orange. Go around, go up. You want to go all the way around and create a patchwork and you want it to be in colors that you know that you like that you have um, played with before and remember it's got to be just nice and watery enough and you want these colors to be mostly medium and not not too light not too dark because you want to be able to get your image over it. So blue looks great next to orange. It also looks cool next to green. Let's try that. Let's get in a little, maybe a little purple. Let's, let's make it a little more bluey purple. And a little lighter. So purple is good next to orange. Let's try it next to the green up here. We need to get a little bit, let's get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more um, blue-green. How about that? We don't have any of that yet. Go around, kind of nice. Let's get a neutral color in there, just because neutrals are always great to have make it kind of a dynamic neutral. Brownish, uh, brown with blue. How about earth colors, brown with green. And let's get a dynamic color. How about a, a real, real great red. See how that goes somewhere. Ooh, look at that. A bold mark here, another bold mark somewhere else. Maybe 
me something soft. Let's pick a uh, little color like this. Mix it with a little bit of, uh, let's, see, let's see, let's see what we get here. I think this is kind of interesting. I personally like that kind of color mixed with a pinkish color. Well, let's get a purpley pink. That's a nice combo next to that. It looks like we don't have any basic yellow in here, so let's get a real nice yellow if we can. Clean this brush a little bit more. Make sure every spot is taken care of, that there's not any white left. And now you have your underpainting ready to start your painting. And look at all those great color combinations you have. You've got big shapes, small shapes, you've got um, light and dark, you've got neutrals, you've got colors that come forward, colors that go back. It's all ready. Mm.